This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Hello, I'm Dr. Nancy Lotridge-Anderson, president of New Perspectives, a fee-only financial advising firm and co-host of Money Talks. For over 10 years, Money Talks has been answering your personal financial questions and sharing knowledge about money management. Money Talks can be heard Tuesdays at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio. Podcasts can be found on our website, money.mpbonline.org, or on your smart device's podcasting platform. Welcome to In Legal Terms from MPB Think Radio, the show all about you and your rights. Our host is usually Professor Richard Gershon of the University of Mississippi School of Law. He's out today. I'm Liz Gill, and I am pleased to welcome back to the show Attorney Baskin Jones. While I love talking to Baskin and uh, getting to relay information to us, I hope I never have to use his services. So, Baskin, tell us a little bit about your background and your practice area. Well, happy to be here. I am Mississippi, born and raised. I have a family here in Jackson. We uh, have four kids, and uh, we are happy to be in Jackson. Uh, My office is a block away from the house. It is uh, on State Street. Wait, the the house, uh, the Capitol House or your house house? Well, it's a mile from the Capitol House, <laughs> but uh, a block from the House House. So okay. uh, I, I, I say that, you know, I'm uh, pretty spoiled when it comes to commutes. I, I see others that have a 10 minute commute here or there, and my commute is a block. <laughs> but we practice personal injury. We help uh, individuals who have been injured due to someone else's negligence, and that is usually an insurance claim. Uh, the lawsuit will say that. We're suing the individual, but there's almost always insurance involved. And and speaking of that, uh, the the rest of the story. I think the last time you were here, you had just been in a car accident yourself. How ha, has that re- played out? Yeah, it's been interesting. You know, it, you can be on one side of uh, an issue, and really, uh, it doesn't dawn on you some of the day-to-day issues someone might have after a car wreck. So going through the process yourself, uh, going to the hospital, going, uh, getting that treatment, uh, having uh, issues that don't quite resolve, and, and then even the interactions with the insurance company. I've had some uh, entertaining interactions with my own adjuster and, uh, you know, I think all my advice stays the same as far as the insurance company. They're not your friend. They uh, have a business interest in your claim and certainly want to, as much as possible, minimize the amount that they would ever have to pay in a claim like yours. So we caution uh, our clients always to be aware of that. And now I know it on a very personal level. It, it's it's business. It's a business for them, and uh, but at the end of the day, the work we do, we have a lot of satisfaction in it because at the end of the day, we're putting someone back as much as we can to help life was before, trying to take care of those damages, the, get treatment for those injuries, and get them back to a good place. So, you know, you, you mentioned you're a personal injury attorney. What does personal injury mean? Okay, I know what a divorce attorney does, and I know what a a real estate attorney does. What what does personal injury encompass? Right. Well, there's a couple of types of cases that would typically fall uh, into a practice like mine. Uh, Certainly, a car wreck is one that everyone would think of. A slip and fall would be one that is often on people's minds, but you know, uh, device cases, you know, there's medical device litigation. Certainly we are speaking to individuals every day that have had trouble with some medical device or an issue involving a medical device. Uh, There are any sort of injury that is caused by the negligence of another that falls into our practice area. So there's workers' compensation claims. Uh, There's, we do a lot of 18-wheeler and trucking work. And that work is uh, very specialized. Uh, The tools we are using in these wrecks to determine how exactly they happen are uh, much more sophisticated than your typical car wreck case. So motorcycles, uh, bicyclists, pedestrians, uh, really any injury. Uh, And often when an individual 
comes into contact with a two-ton vehicle, um, there's serious injury involved. So we are about the process of getting people to treatment and making sure that they're making a claim for their full damages. Yikes, yikes. We, we love our, uh, our, our truck drivers. We have a lot of truck drivers who listen to MPB, and that's just a whole, a whole realm, a whole universe in everything having to do with trucking in and of itself. The, the lingo, the, uh, the learning curve in a trucking case, um, it's, it is a different world and one that uh, there's more documentation, more things to consider. Um, certainly, uh, there's plenty of truckers that do everything by the book, exactly how it's supposed to be done. And then there's some uh, fast and loose uh, truckers out on the roadway. And certainly, we think that our work uh, helps to encourage those truckers and their insurance companies to keep a little more watchful eye on, uh, you know, if you're a fatigued driver, if you're a driver that uh, has uh, an over is overloaded. Uh, the sorts of dangers that come along with those things, uh, work like ours can make sure that the incentives are in the right places for these things to be taken care of. Yeah, and I know we've had you on the show, and one of the podcasts we had was talking about bicyclists. Right. Uh, bicyclists, uh, you know, the laws in the state of Mississippi are uh, newer in regards to bicyclists, but, you know, the three-foot passing rule uh, and, you know, it came from a tragic case of a, a young man that was on his bike and uh, a car tried to pass him. And, you know, we you know, pay particular attention to our bicyclists and certainly want to let the public know that uh, the bicyclist is there and the bicyclist has rights on the roadway that we need to respect uh, just as if they were another vehicle, you know, driving by and getting as close as you can to them laying on the horn and throwing your drink at them, uh, that might not go over so well today. There are now criminal penalties involved for uh, behavior like that. Well, and we know a lot of folks listen to our podcasts, but a lot of people listen to our MPB Think Radio shows, you know, driving to the grocery store, driving to the uh, pharmacy, you know, getting in and out of the car. And cars are so such an important part of our of our life that you want to be treated nice. You don't want to be the person everybody else is talking about because you drive so poorly. It's true. Uh, you know, I, I find myself taking my own advice and, uh, you know, distracted driving and texting and driving anything on, on the cell phone while driving. Uh, we don't realize sometimes just uh, how often our eyes are away from the roadway and a uh, certainly, uh, knowing or being able to react to something on the roadway, those uh, that 10 feet or that, that split second, it matters. So certainly, uh, whatever we can do to help drivers uh, remember uh, that they are operating a two-ton piece of machinery, and uh, it, it can do some damage. Okay, so I'm going to date myself, uh, you, you Gen Xers and you Boomers who are, are listening. So is the personal injury realm of law kind of the same as tort law? Right. All of our uh, claims fall under tort law. And torts, uh, really, if, if we have a, a duty to exercise reasonable care. That's, that's lawyer talk. But we have a duty to act uh, like a normal, sane human. And to the extent that uh, the rest of the public thinks that your activity was negligent, that you uh, were careless, that you were not paying attention, uh, that behavior would lead to uh, the necessity of paying the damages done by your negligent behavior. So uh, tort law is all about this sort of negligence. It's all about uh, activities that cause injuries to others. See, this is what I love about these shows. You hear these these buzzwords. You know, what does that mean? But th we get a chance to uh, talk to experts and really find out what some of these expert terms mean. And you can do that right now. We've got an attorney talking about personal injury. So if you have a question, uh, send an email to legalterms at mpbonline.org. We're discussing personal injury with attorney Baskin Jones. But 
But you didn't think I could go this whole show without talking about voting in your rights, did you? Today is Election Day. Did you know? Yes, April 2nd. No, it's not April Fool's. It's Election Day. I'm going to tell you more about that next. You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. This is In Legal Terms. Now, not everybody has a chance to listen to our show live. So if you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show from inlegalterms.mpbonline.org. Our host is usually Professor Richard Gershon from the University of Mississippi School of Law, who's out today. I'm Liz Gill. So April 2nd, 2024, it's primary runoff election day. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Two Republicans will compete for the right to challenge 16-term Democratic incumbent Representative Benny Thompson in Mississippi's 2nd Congressional District. So if you... So we've got Ron Eller, Andrew Scott Smith were the top vote-getters in the March 12th primary, but neither received the vote majority needed to avoid the runoff election. So... If you did not vote in the primary, you can vote in the election runoff. If you voted in the March 12th primary and you voted in the Democratic primary, you're done. If you did vote in the March 12th primary in the Republican side, you can then vote in this runoff for Mississippi's second congressional district Republican. All right. So if everybody understands that, it is Election Day, and this is your chance to make your voice heard. But today's topic is about personal injury. We have guest Baskin Jones, who has been a guest on our show quite a few times. We're so glad that he he partners with us. And we have a question from Ridgeland. It's Ardell. Ardell, thanks for calling in to, in legal terms. Well, I don't know. Do you have a comment or a question? Go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm going to try to distill this down really fast so i just talked with a friend who was in a bad accident and she had uninsured motorists and there is a form that you check and what is i select ue which is added to at fault liability limits and then there's one that you check which is you and it's reduced by at fault liability and she was not aware that she had checked off the U, um, which is reduced that fault liability. And it has meant all the difference in the world. And I just switched insurance companies for my automobiles. And I'm not familiar with this form. I don't think I've selected anything. And I'm wondering if, um, the, if the attorney can speak to that and give any advice because um, I'll go in and check on that if I need. Well, I, I, I can. Uh, uninsured motorist coverage is the best bargain in baseball. I recommend that uh, everyone carry uninsured motorist coverage uh, and carry it on as many vehicles as you have. The thing is, in Mississippi, This uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage will protect you and your family uh, in the event that the other driver carries no coverage at all. As you know, Mississippi requires auto liability coverage, but uh, not all people obey the law. And as a result, I think it's something like 20% of drivers in Mississippi are driving without any auto coverage. And that uh, is a problem, especially if it's you who are looking at the medical bills. So carrying this coverage, it doesn't cost that much, but uh, a benefit in Mississippi is that this coverage uh, is going to stack. And so when you have stacking uninsured coverage across multiple vehicles, uh, it can add up to a large benefit for you and your family. You're not allowed to carry more than your personal liability limits, but at the same time, uh, you might need more of those as well. So uh, your friend uh, is welcome to call with any specific questions about uninsured motorist. Uh, Our new 
phone number is 601 injured. I haven't haven't memorized all the digits that go into 601 injured just yet, but uh, should be easily rememberable. Um, happy to speak with folks. We offer free consultations. I speak uh, with individuals every day. A big part of what I do is look at all of the available insurance that might be out there. We're looking in places that you wouldn't normally think, and often uh, it makes all the difference in the world, especially in these large injury claims. So did, did what, what was she talking about with the, the check a box and don't check a box? Right. You know? so, so there's a form uh, that allows you to decline uninsured motorist coverage or to only carry uh, uninsured rather than also carrying underinsured motorist oh, coverage. And so, it, I guess it's cheaper if you don't have it. Right. It would be cheaper. Uh, but, you know, the amount of uh, potential coverage that you are giving up by checking that um, is there's really no reason not to carry uninsured motorist. It, again, the uh, sticky situations that uh, have been solved by uninsured motorist coverage, um, I've got hundreds of stories about this coverage getting used and being very valuable to the people that had it. See, I am so grateful Ardell called in because uh, Ardell just gave us all this information. And also, if you listen to Money Talks Tuesday on MPB Think Radio at 9 a.m. or AutoCorrect Thursdays at 10 a.m. on MPB Think Radio or find their podcasts, they also have talked about, um, you know, if if money is an well, if money is an issue with you, I don't know who it's not an issue with, but a lot of times if you get a new quote for car insurance, you know, at least every year or maybe every two years, a lot of times you can if you specify the exact same coverage you can maybe shop around so that it will cost less but you still get a full coverage right we find that these uh, all policies of insurance have a certain amount that they increase year over year so requoting your insurance with a new provider or even with your your own provider you're going to see most likely a, a good amount of savings just from requoting that insurance. Well, Ardell, I'm sure you've uh, you've, you've uh, touched somebody, and you'll they'll be able to learn from your question and your your friend's unfortunate event. Thank you. Let's go to Hattiesburg now and find out what's up with Rodney. Rodney, we're so glad you've called in to in legal terms today. What's your comment or question? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, I just want to. Uh, I have a question. I got. I, I've had over the years quite a few experiences with personal injury cases and working with uh, lawyers. Um, especially in my, I live in Hattiesburg now, but I lived in Louisiana all my life. That's my home. Been in Hattiesburg since uh, Katrina. I've, I've had a, <laughs> a case up here since I've been up here, but I had a big case back in Louisiana and New Orleans back in the. Uh, late to early 90s. So my question is, I, I got a lot of experience in dealing with my law firm. I had a good law firm, a good lawyer back then. I had an accident, and my case is probably worth about three, four $400,000, I think my lawyer told me. But uh, ultimately, the insurance company in the state at the time, during the time that my case was going on, was liquidated. So my case went on for about three and a half, four years. I had uh, took all kinds of doctor treatment, therapy, this, this, and that. Didn't have surgery, but uh, when I find when my ultimately my, my my case was settled, but it dwindled down. Uh, State uh, Insurance Commission took over some cases, and uh, during that time, some insurance companies went under. But anyway, my case dribbled down, and we got paid pennies on the dollar, but uh, was ultimately settled. Mm -hmm. But my question is, uh, after overall going over everything, uh, I learned a lot, and I'm wondering... If uh, you never, you know, when you lawyers, uh, law firms, when you're dealing with law firms, uh, you you have to sign a contract for for, uh, for representation, and uh, you never. A lot of people, I find a lot of people 
don't know or don't, uh, they just sign the contracts. And then after the case is all over, whether it went to trial or whether it will settle out of court, they say, oh, my, I got paid this, this, and that, but my fee was so high. So my question is, is there, there used to be, uh, well, I'm not going to say it used to be. I'm going to ask this question because that's what I call it in for. What is the standard fee for a law firm to charge in a personal injury case? Now, I think I may be wrong. It used to be 33 and a third. Correct. But so can you, yeah, you bring up two. You, yeah, you bring up two really interesting points, and I think I'll, I'll talk about both of them. Uh, the first one being. Uh, what happens if an insurance company goes out of business or goes bankrupt? And most states have protections uh, in place that if your insurance company you're making a claim against goes into bankruptcy or receivership, that the state will take over. And there's a certain amount of money in a fund that is kept for this purpose. What happens if an insurance company fails? Often it affects the value of these cases. It might be another good reason to carry uninsured motorist coverage with a uh, bigger insurance company that uh, has financial resources to make sure they don't go bankrupt. Uh, interesting fact, uh, some of the biggest surpluses in the insurance uh, industry occurred immediately after Katrina. That, that seems really odd to me as a personal injury attorney. doesn't seem like after a 40-year event uh, like Katrina, that you should have a lot of money left in the bank. might tell you something about the way those claims were paid or handled in court. Um, so the second question you bring up, attorneys that do what I do, uh, try to make it as easy as possible for folks after a wreck. We operate on a contingency contract, which just means that you never pay an attorney that does what I do up front. Uh, you're not paying me for my hourly time, you're not going to get a bill for hourly time. It is just a percentage of uh, whatever the recovery we make for you is. So both of uh, our interests are aligned in that front, that we are just as interested in making a full and maximum recovery as quickly as possible for our clients. We like it that way. We'd rather not uh, sit around thinking of ways to bill someone We'd like to get your claim resolved and get it resolved as quickly as possible. Uh, one third, uh, I think, is a standard rate uh, to start with on these claims, 33%. Uh, and that uh, is up until the point that the lawsuit is filed, if a claim can be resolved before that. Oftentimes, 33% uh, is uh, the rate that you would see for a personal injury attorney. All right. Thanks, Rodney, for, for bringing those up. And, you know, I had a few minutes while, uh, while he was talking, and I am looking at a landline phone that has the buttons and the alphabet on the buttons. Uh, your phone number is 601-INJURED, which is 601-465-8733. You know, I think there might be a certain percentage of the population that does not know what to do when they see <laughs> MPB six, Think six Radio. Oh, when they see six hundred one injured, they're not exactly sure uh, what that would mean. Right, do, right. Do I press? Do I press my? Do I say injured to my phone and it <laughs> dials it? No, you, there's a keypad and it has letters on it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so six hundred one. Four six five eight seven three three, and we'll have that information in our podcast. Hey, we've got a couple of lines open. Um, Brandon, hang on. You can email us your questions. Uh, we've got one from Dante. We'll get to in just a minute. Our email address is legalterms at mpbonline.org. We are talking with attorney Baskin Jones from the Jones Law Firm about personal injury. You know, we are in the middle of the Mississippi legislative session. Uh, Baskin's office is a mile from the legislature. Uh, what's going on this week? I'll tell you how you can find out next. You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. 
You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. Professor Richard Gershon is usually our expert host, but he's out today. I'm Liz Gill. We do hope you'll subscribe to our podcast. You can find MPB Think Radio recordings on the website mpbonline.org slash radio. I love that our show is all about you and your rights. Now, your rights are being determined right now by your Mississippi House and Senate representatives. You can find out what some of the bills and the issues are by listening to the MPB News program at Issue. Now, this year at Issue is heard on MPB Think Radio Fridays at 6.30 p.m. with extra information on Mississippi Public Broadcasting's YouTube channel. I'll have links to that in this show's podcast information. So so right now we're talking about your rights uh, during a personal injury scenario with our guest, Baskin Jones. Uh, Baskin, we got an email from someone who wanted to know, do personal injury cases have to involve an actual physical injury? The cases that I take uh, usually do. Uh, we hear people talk about uh, emotional distress. Uh, you know, I saw this thing or uh, this had such a, uh emotional impact on me uh, that uh, I, I would claim for damages uh, due to this emotional impact. I'm scared to ride in a car anymore. I'm scared to do that or right. what something. We, what we find, uh, you know, the claims that we end up taking and working on involve uh, a physical injury that can have an emotional uh, component. So, you know, if you hurt your neck in a a rear end car wreck, but you also break out into sweat and uh, have issues whenever you were in a car uh, from that point on and getting or getting therapy for it, uh, that will also be a part of the injury claim we are bringing. Uh, not often do we bring claims where an individual is uh, only emotionally damaged. Uh, it's, uh, but the physical injury being tied to the emotional injury, uh, it, it makes more sense. It's more understandable for uh, the everyday person. All right. Well, I hope that helped our emailer. Let's now go to Brandon. Brandon, we're so glad that you've called in today. What's your comment or question for our guest, Attorney Baskin Jones? Uh, my question is I had a uh, fall and I have some medical hardware in my leg. And recently I went and had it x rayed and it said some of the hardware was mal- malfunctioned or bent. And I was wondering. Is that a reason to contact an attorney? It very well can be. We get phone calls uh, daily uh, and speak to individuals about this medical hardware. Oftentimes, it is identified soon after a piece of medical hardware hits the market that there are big problems with it, that it's not uh, meeting the standards it was expected to meet that it's not suitable for the purpose uh, that was put in for. So, yes, uh, that is certainly something that uh, an office just like mine would be happy to help with. Uh, Our consultations are free, and our number is incredibly easy to remember, 601-INJURED. So I'm happy to to speak to you more about your claim and uh, what might be available if there is any current litigation on this particular medical product. Thanks, Brandon. So I I have... Okay, here's my question. I have a a relative who had a hip replacement and then later found out the parts used in that were recalled. And then they had to have another surgery. And I think, you know, insurance or the, the company that made the recall things covered some of it. So if you are being... Mm, compensated from the company directory director directly does that mean you don't need to see a personal injury attorney well uh i can only imagine having a uh, device implanted into my body and coming through the recovery process for having that uh device in my body and then being told that uh there's an issue. Oops. <laughs> you, you, you've got to do it again. 
So there are other damages uh, involved uh, in this. You know, certainly there's going to be lost work, additional physical therapy, all of those things. You know, I think a fair result would be uh, much larger than what a insurance company, your health insurance, would be doing uh, just as a matter of course. Uh, in the end, uh, on these claims, often the damages are much bigger than uh, people think about in the beginning. And insurance companies are happy to show up two days after your wreck and say, well, seems like you're as good as new. You don't even need to really go see a doctor, right? And that person might be left with neck and back pain that uh, slowly creeps back in uh, a few days after the wreck. But they took the $1,000 uh, lowball offer from the insurance company. So uh, some of this is a document uh, documentation process, feeling what your body feels like and making sure that you are certain that uh, the, the amount being offered is a fair amount. These free consultations, uh, that is often the biggest question. You know, is there more that I should be considering in my personal injury claim before I accept uh, this number? We're happy to have that conversation any day of the week, uh, and it's uh, one that I think is the most important conversation uh, that if, if, you're, if you've already been made a good offer, the amount of value I could add is, is minimal, but uh, if they haven't made you a good offer or you haven't considered what else might be available, you might want to do that. So yes, uh, call, uh, get a feel, be sure before you sign that piece of paper. Well, and speaking to Brandon's situation and my family member's situation, if there was a malfunctioning uh, device or hardware, uh, that might lend itself to a class action situation. Do you handle that? Do you refer people if you've heard of that kind of thing? Or how how would a class action happen? Right. So after these products hit the market, uh, you often see the issues with them uh, fairly quickly. Uh, sometimes it, it takes a few months, but uh, so there will be a group of people that all uh, have similar claims. And often it makes sense that we don't have, you know, a hundred separate lawsuits, but they become consolidated. To start, each of those individuals have their own claims that at some point in the litigation process, it makes sense to consolidate them into one action. So uh, a firm that does personal injury work would be able to answer those questions of if there is current litigation or if we'd be talking about uh, a new and different type of litigation. Oftentimes there is uh, large-scale litigation already ongoing, and we participate in that at our firm. All right. Well, let's let's back up. Let's take a whole bunch of steps back, and I get hurt. Whatever the situation is, something, somebody hurts me, do I have a personal injury case? It could be. Uh, the elements we are looking for are that uh, this person owed a duty of care, and most often somebody would owe that duty to you, that they breached the duty by doing something careless, negligent, or inattentive. Uh, and really, if they did that, uh, any damage they caused, uh, they would be on the hook for. And again, uh, often these claims, 99% of the time, these claims involve policies of insurance. We're not allowed to talk about that at trial. The jury never hears that we are suing the insurance company and asking them to be fair in this claim. They see that, you know, we're suing grandma. But in the state of Mississippi, uh, the uh, personal injury uh, the liability limits for an individual driver uh, or having insurance on your home that's required by your mortgage, we're going to be talking about an insurance policy. Uh, so regardless of what it might look like in the courtroom, uh, we wouldn't be there if there weren't a policy of insurance available that we were asking an insurance company to be fair about. We, When we were mentioning having the added... Uh, uninsured or underinsured motorist to your car insurance, you know, so many times people in Mississippi might live in a home that, you know, was their grandmother's or their grandfather's or their parents, and there isn't a mortgage that would require homeowners insurance. So 
you know, sometimes you hear after a tornado, oh, well, we didn't have insurance. Are there different levels of insurance for homes, like where you could just have, you know, a personal injury insurance on a house or if you didn't want to get flood or wind or something? Correct. The uh, policies that are available on a home, certainly there are add-ons. There are, let's say, uh, earthquake or flood insurance that would also be available on top of a normal uh, general occurrence type policy. So, uh, you know, if your house is struck by lightning or has a tree limb that falls on it, uh, those items would be the typical things we would think of in a uh, homeowner's policy. But you do have this expanded coverage for things like earthquakes and uh, floods. Now, uh, you brought up an interesting point. Uh, There are coverages often in these policies that uh, people just are not aware of. So you've bought this coverage. You have a claim. uh, You might not really recognize it. So a few things quickly that uh, your uninsured motorist coverage also can potentially cover blood relatives. So I think there's a lot of uh, car wreck claims that haven't been thought about in the right way. You think, okay, this other person's insurance, they didn't have enough, but uh, what do do I do? So that process of making the phone call to an attorney that does what I do, uh, and the process we go through of looking at uh, every possible angle of the insurance, I think is the most valuable service that we offer. And often we find additional uninsured motorist coverage that would cover those additional medical bills that the other person's state minimum coverage won't cover. Uh, And it's really just understanding that other insurance coverage might be out there. We do this every day. We've helped hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, We'd be happy to take a look and not charge you anything to do it. All right. I'm refreshing our email uh, account. That address is legalterms at mpbonline.org. Now, we love Baskin, but he's just one guy in a firm in uh, Jackson. So uh, if you need an attorney, I've got a suggestion of how you might find one. That is next. This is In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. Thank you for being part of In Legal Terms. So remember, if you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show on the MPB Think Radio YouTube channel. And, oh, gosh, Abram is our uh, uh, engineer, and he does everyday tech. I love the transcript function on YouTube because then if you listen to a podcast and you, you you remember a word, truck or... Uh, liability, or I don't know what it is, you can type that in the search and you can look in the transcript to find where in the podcast you heard that. I just love that. Our host is usually Professor Richard Gershon from the University of Mississippi School of Law. He's out today. I'm Liz Gill. At 11 a.m. Central on Tuesdays, following our over the air broadcast, you can hear Southern Remedies, relatively speaking, with Dr. Susan Buttress on MPB Think Radio. So if you are in need of an attorney for personal injury or maybe for divorce or intellectual property or whatever, try looking through the lawyer directory and the for the public sections of the Mississippi Bar's website, msbar.org. Baskin and I were talking during the break. So you you have to fill out stuff. You know, when you're a member of the bar, you you fill out stuff for this directory. They like uh, knowing where their attorneys are and having uh, current contact information. So, you know, we're required uh, to make sure the bar has current updated information and they Put it right into that directory for the publics. Fantastic. That is good to know. And we are talking with attorney Baskin Jones from the Jones Law Firm, whose website is injuredinmississippi.com, uh, about being injured or personal injury in Mississippi. And I'll have all that information on this show's website. We've got two calls. Uh, Tom, we'll get to you. Mikey, I'm not sure if we will make it for you. Let's go to Tom in Neshoba County. Tom, what's your comment or question for the show? I was wondering if the attorney would speak to uh, uh, term limits in filing a personal injury claim. Time limits? Correct. We call them statutes of limitation. And there are 
time limits that would be involved in uh, filing these types of tort actions. The state has given itself a get-out-of-jail-free card in some ways on this front. Uh, Actions against the state or municipalities in the state of Mississippi are one year. Uh, The hospitals owned by the state, one year. Private hospitals, two years. But most other general negligence, a three-year statute of limitations. Now, certainly, uh, I would tell you to call an attorney sooner rather than later and not to depend on uh, my voice on the radio to give you certainty about that topic. But in general, uh, car wreck cases, slip and fall cases in Mississippi are a three-year statute. You must file your lawsuit or be forever barred in three years after the date of the incident. All right. Thanks for asking that question, Tom. That was one I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought of. So we appreciate you. This is why we talk about how our listeners add value to our programs, because I can ask whatever I want, but we're so glad that Tom called in to ask what he wanted. All right, let's go to Mikey, who's called in from Mobile. Mikey, what's your comment or question? My question is regarding um, someone, something that I heard you all talking about, but I didn't, I didn't catch the entire conversation. It was, um, uh, is it order of protection or order of release um, when, you, when you want somebody to not have access to you because they've already harmed you in the past? Um, the, the, the term that I heard you all, um, I'm sorry, I don't know what kind of lawyer, preliminary injunction. And that that would, what does that mean? And what kind of lawyer do I look for to get that? Right. You would likely want to look for a a family law attorney. And uh, it sounds like you're asking about restraining orders. And that would be a court of chancery type issue. So if a family law attorney would be practicing in the chancery courts of the state on a regular basis. Thanks, Mikey. We appreciate you calling in. So... uh, If you're hurt, of course you want to be well, but I guess there's all kind of parameters to be made whole. Let's talk about the money. How how is it calculated? How what what is the value? How do you figure out what a personal injury claim is worth? Right. So the big picture is that as much as possible, we're trying to uh, capture every amount of damage that has happened as a result of an injury. So the big things are medical bills. What does your future medical treatment look like? What does your lost work look like? Uh, What does pain and suffering look like? What is uh, things you're not able to do around the house anymore even? So uh, we are trying to capture as many of the different categories as possible and uh, ensure that we are making a full claim. Uh, for those damages. Now, it is a complicated process. There are things that we are paying attention to that uh, normal, everyday citizens might not think about. Uh, You might not think that the future medical treatment will be as big of an issue as it is, but uh, we are paying attention to the doctor's records and what the prognosis might be in an ongoing way. So, uh, taking the, the big picture view Uh, Often these claims are worth much more than uh, the insurance company would have you think at first. You know, if they can maybe pay your $1,000 hospital bill and get off the hook for the rest of the damages, that that sounds pretty good to an insurance company. So they'll uh, float those offers early, and really the hope is that you're just going to need the money immediately and uh, will take just whatever is offered. So uh, a process of understanding really what your claim is worth and how it needs to be pursued uh, is a part of our day-to-day conversations with uh, people who call us. Okay, last question, and this is the one thing everybody should pay attention to to take away because a lot of this stuff is after the fact. You can contact the attorney and find out blah, blah, blah later down the road. If you are hurt, you know, boom, And then a minute, two minutes later, someone asks for your statement. What do you say? What do you not say? Right. So uh, there are uh, 
words that I, that I see in statements every day, and I, I scratch my head and, and wonder, uh, wonder why on earth uh, we offered up that information, especially in your dazed state right after a wreck. You know, they came out of nowhere. You know, uh, that, uh, that, that really sounds like you weren't paying attention when you say they came out of nowhere. Uh, you know, when sometimes these uh, insurance companies call and they'll, they'll ask you at the beginning of the conversation, uh, how are you feeling today? That's not a simple, uh, cordial question. They are noting. We're their, all trained to say, I'm fine. How are you? A hundred percent. And uh, we, we all want to be okay. And that, that insurance company, they are certainly wanting you to say that you are okay. And uh, so, uh, yes, it is a process of being very careful. The a statement to the other person's insurance company, it's not required, and it's only ever used against an individual. You have to give statements to your own insurance company to make sure you have coverage. But the other person's insurance company, they can come and get it. All right. So say say less or just say less. <laughs> Baskin, thank you so much for giving of your time My to uh, to help us uh, learn about uh, this topic. And, you know, Ardell, Rodney, Brandon, Tom and Mikey getting all of our questions answered. That's going to wrap us up for In Legal Terms. Our team consists of board engineer Abram Nanny, podcast producer Charles Arnold, and our call screener was Marissa Bond. I hope you can join us next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central for In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. And it's Election Day. Don't forget, if you can vote, go vote. Thanks. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.